conversation today is understanding the staging of breast cancer. Much has been in the media recently about breast cancer stage four. Many women are extremely concerned about what does this mean. And in fact, are black women more predisposed to having stage four breast cancer or not? And we are going to explain to you the various stages of breast cancer and why breast cancer, why stage four is so frightening to so many people. And with me, I have two very able people to do this. They are Dr. Michael D. Giovanna. Hello. Hello, Anzika. A and welcome. Thank you. And Dr. Mesa, say your last name for me. Abu Kalaf. Abu Kalaf. You see, I would have butchered that name. <laughs> and they're both from Yale um, Breast Cancer Program from Yale University Breast Cancer Program, and they're oncologists. This time, we're going to really hone in to uh, helping you to understand what is stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, and why getting a mammogram and regular checkup is so important. So the breast is actually a gland. Mm -hmm. It's a milk-producing gland, and its purpose is to provide milk for a suckling baby. And um, under the skin of the breast is the breast mound, which is shown here. Mm -hmm. And of course, the breast sits on the chest wall. Mm -hmm. And underneath that, you can see the ribs with muscles that actually connect the ribs to each other. And sitting on top of that is the woman's breast. And essentially, the anatomy of the breast is a series of ducts that carry milk to the nipple for a baby when a baby is feeding. Mm -hmm. And those ducts end in what is called lobules. And the lobules are little grape-like sacs where the milk is actually produced. And when a baby is suckling, the milk that is produced in these lobules flows out through the ducts and to the nipple for the baby. The remainder of the breast, which is shown in yellow here, is simply just fat the same as fat anywhere else in the body. And in a woman who is not pregnant, most of the breast tissue is actually fat. When a woman is pregnant, in preparation for feeding a young baby, these ducts and lobules will grow significantly and fill the breast. And that's part of the reason why a woman's breast becomes enlarged during pregnancy and breastfeeding. What I would like to begin with, if I could, is explaining what staging is not. Okay, tell us what staging is not. Okay. <laughs> because I often find that when I encounter patients newly diagnosed with breast cancer that they have a misconception of what staging actually is. Mm -hmm. And the misconception is that the stage means how much time they have left. And that's not the case. So many people have this inaccurate perception that cancer progresses through stages, first stage one, and then stage two, and then stage three. And somebody in stage three has less time left to live than stage two. And that is not at all what the staging of cancer is. What the staging is, is simply when somebody is first diagnosed with a cancer, we determine what is the extent of their cancer. And that is the definition of what staging is. So is it, it, but isn't the stage, when you're diagnosed, if it's a stage 2 or 2B or 3, isn't it because you have had the cancer longer and therefore it is more advanced why it is stage 2B or 3? It's, it's not necessarily that you've had it longer. I mean, there's a lot of... Um, um, factors that play with it, how aggressive the cancer is. So you, um, a, a patient could have uh, a breast cancer for many years and it might never travel beyond the breast cancer oh. to, it's just a, um, a slower uh, growing cancer where uh, a patient might have had a mammogram and that's, you know, so a lot of patients say, well, I had my mammogram six months ago and there was nothing there and now I can feel a lump. That's just a more rapidly growing breast cancer. So there's a lot of factors that play into that. Um, and that's so, yeah. so I think you are half correct. So the stage reflects how long the cancer has been growing up until this point, mm -hmm. but also how fast that particular cancer grows compared to another cancer of the same type. So some grow fast and some grow slow. You know, I think that for some reason, people tend to think that if the tumor is deep within the breast, it is more of a problem than if it is closer to the surface of the breast. And um, I'm not sure what the logic is, but somehow, because I've spoken to several people, and I tend to think that, that if it's, you have to probe so far 
and the treatment would be after so much more aggress be so much more aggressive if it's deep in the breast than if it's you know closer to the surface you can probably just go in and take it out. That's yeah. and that's um, not the, the case. <laughs> uh -huh. the, okay. the treatment still depends on the things we're going to talk, talk about, about okay. like the size of the tumor. Okay, so let's go through the stages. So we talked about stage one. Well, okay. Um, so what's the next so stage? Overall, when we're looking at staging, we're looking at the size of the tumor, mm -hmm. then the number of lymph nodes involved, and if the cancer spread beyond the breast and the lymph nodes. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. So tell us what we're seeing there. And, so and since I began with the anatomy, perhaps yes. I should also explain these anatomical things that we're talking about. Okay, okay. So lymph nodes are part of our immune system and they are scattered throughout our body, but there are clumps of lymph nodes that are in specific places, and sometimes they are superficial so that we can feel them and examine them when we touch a patient and examine a patient. And lymph nodes are often the very first place that a cancer might spread to as it attempts to spread to distant parts of the body through the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. And the lymph nodes some are in some ways thought of as sort of a filter to try to stop the cancer before it has a chance oh, to spread to different parts of the body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And each different type of cancer in different parts of the body has a tendency to spread to the nearby lymph, lymph nodes, nodes in that area. Okay. So with breast cancer, we would be talking about what are called the axillary lymph nodes, which are the lymph nodes in the armpit. So that's the thing we're looking at there, that little, that looks like a little red. No, that's, that's um, actually the breast cancer, the tumor. That, yes. Okay. That's so stage one cancers are usually cancers where the tumor is less than two centimeters mm -hmm. in size and there's no involvement of the lymph nodes. That means that the cancer started in the breast and stayed in the breast. It did not travel to the So the that we're seeing on the screen is stage one yes. breast yes. cancer. Yes. And the cancer is within the breast. It hasn't spread anywhere yet. Yes. Tell me a little more then. So now how do you treat, well, we, we don't want to get into a lot into treatment mm -hmm. because we're going to talk about that, but what's the first thing a woman should do if she's told she has a stage one breast cancer? Um, see or what do you guys do next? Do you determine the TNM and, or the grade? What do you do well, yeah. next? She sees a surgeon and most of the time what is done is with very small cancer such as this, um, um, a surgery called the lumpectomy, that means the removal of the, lu uh, the lump is done. And there's a procedure called a sent sentinel lymph node procedure. And what that is, is injecting a dye or um, into the cancer and seeing what, um, following where it drains. And then removing the first lymph node or lymph nodes to which it drains and seeing if there's cancer there or not because those are the lymph nodes that are most likely to be involved if the cancer's traveled outside the Ah, breast. so by injecting the dye there, the dye sort of leads you to where the cancer might be. Is this a special type of dye that follows the cancer? Uh, yeah, it's what you're doing is just you're trying to follow the path where the cancer cells usually travel because like we said, lymph nodes are um, um, a part of how our body uh, tries to prevent infections or spread of cancer, so it's kind of a filter. So you, you, you follow to that first lymph node or lymph nodes okay. where it goes. Did it, you have something to say about this particular one? I was just one? going to add that sure. we don't know for 100% for sure what the stage is actually until the surgery, surgery is, is finished. Oh, because as we're talking about, one of the factors is the size of the tumor. And the size of the tumor is most accurately nice. determined by the pathologist looking at it under a microscope. So you not take it out. So yes. you take out the yes. tumor, you send it yes. to pathology, and they look at it, and yeah. they determine now, the size, you say, but is it just the size that determines the stage? Um, like we said, it's the size of the tumor, mm -hmm. and then if the lymph nodes are involved. So the pathologist would look at the tumor itself and would look at that lymph node that we removed and tell us um, how big it is and um, if there's lymph nodes involved. Okay. Mm -hmm.